behave badly, people will stop patronizing them. End of story. Uh, what say you? I, I hear your support. You're welcome to the party. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. No, I think that that's a good summary of where we're at. And I think that this is a good example of where having the government out might have been helpful in this case. So if we have no regulation of banks and, you know, you've got a, some banksters who are running a big scam. I mean, you know, this, this happened in the United States from the founding of the republic up until the 1930s. People put their money in the bank. Abraham Lincoln did this in 1857. He was, he was paid $4,800 by the railroads for the work he did. He went to the bank and, uh, you know, cashed the check. Uh, good thing he did because two weeks later the bank failed. And the banksters who owned the bank ran away with the money. Um, how is the average person supposed to audit a bank? Well, this isn't about one person. This is about markets. And altogether, it's how do we know that when we go to the store and buy a Snickers, it's going to be safe? It's because they're out there. They've continually put out good product. And so we know that a Snickers is going to be safe. It isn't that the FDA is necessarily making sure that we're safe. We know that they can't even ensure that baby formula is safe, but the market tells us that a snicker when we go to the store is going to be safe. And the more that we have government involved in saying, don't worry, you can cross the road without looking, we've made it safe. The more problems we get into where people cross the road without looking, or in this case, deposit their checks without actually paying attention to what's in the bank. So with Silicon Valley Bank, we had a homogenous client base where everybody was in kind of the similar industry. And so when the similar industry went down, we had a bank that had problems. And if people instead were paying attention to what the market was doing and that they didn't think the government was there to help them, they would have paid attention to that. And the market would have said, that's not the way we want to bank run. So there's, there's kind of a fire hose of data there. You're suggesting that we shouldn't have big government traffic lights? <laughs> Yeah, well, no, it's not even big government traffic lights. We have big government saying, look, not only have we installed traffic lights, but we've also said that we're going to arrest people that uh, run red lights. Therefore, you don't have to pay attention when you cross the street. Right. You don't have to look around. And in this case, these investors, these depositors needed to look around and understand that a homogenous base was not a good bank. But uh, big media, big big financial guys weren't doing that. They had closed their eyes because the government was saying, oh, no, everything's, everything's safe. So I get it. You're arguing that we don't need bank regulation. We don't need the Food and Drug Administration. We should go back to the, the world that Sinclair Lewis, uh, or was it Upton Sinclair? It was Upton Sinclair chronicled yep. in his book, The Jungle, back in 1909, as I recall, um, about the meatpacking industry. Um, and our food supply, you know, I mean, that led to the pure food, uh, that led to the creation, basically, of the USDA, anyway, um, and the FDA. Um, we should go back to those times. We should just trust big companies. We, we don't have to know what chemicals they're putting in our candy bars. Um, they're good for us, right? I mean, we've got a massive uh, epidemic of obesity and, and type 2 diabetes and heart disease in the United States over the last two generations. Um, there's a lot of speculation that this is caused by chemicals that are being put in our food supply by these same companies. But, hey, we should all become scientists and figure this out. We should. No, but we, listen. This makes we absolutely think it's no okay. sense to me. Absolutely We think no it's sense. okay because the FDA has said, look, all of these bad foods are okay for you. We, our stamp is on the back of these packages. Well, you're thinking if of the, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA, not the FDA, but yeah. Sorry, uh, but if their stamp wasn't on the back of these products, maybe more people would pay attention. And if the leaders in the community said, hey, these are bad for you, then the other people would follow. If your doctor said, these are bad for you, but when the government comes over the top and says, look, no, they aren't, we've inspected it, We've, we've done the research, we know best, and it's good, then people shut off their brains. But it isn't just the individual. You have doctors that you can listen to. You have leaders in the community. You could listen to your politician if you want to. What, 50% of the country well, says that I'm they assuming wouldn't do you're that, agreeing so with Milton fine. Friedman that you don't even want doctors to be licensed and regulated because, hey, if somebody's a bad doctor, the word will spread and people will stop going to him, right? I mean, Milton well, Friedman wrote would, a whole chapter about that in, in his first and major book i'm forgetting the title as it sits we have doctors that are practicing well past their prime but they still have licenses so hospitals still have them hired 
And so that that still works for people. Look, when the government gets involved, we see uh, what um, Madoff, uh, his his investments were inspected several times by the government, which is what allowed him to continually keep getting money from these investors. I think this is called the exceptions that prove the rule, Charles. I, I mean, if you're telling me that the idea that you and the, and the libertarian members of the Republican Party are trying to sell to America is that we should do away with stoplights and traffic lights because it's big government intervention, and you just need to learn to you know look both ways, damn it. Uh, that we should do away with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and and just trust that the big companies and and the little companies too and the and the fly-by-night hustlers are going to be giving us good food because hey they'd get a bad reputation if somebody died and then they may not have to go out of business and start another company under a different name right um, if you're telling us that I don't think anybody's going to buy it. I'm just saying that regulations aren't a magic fairy tale that you can just wave a wand at. And solve all of your problems. Nobody's, if we look nobody's at this suggesting bank, they are. Well, yeah, no. If you That's look at what the left is saying argument. with Silicon Valley Bank, they want to raise the, they want to put the capital requirements back in Dodd Frank because of the Silicon Valley Bank failure. Those capital requirements wouldn't have done anything in this case because the bank made a bad decision. Well, it wasn't the capital requirements; it was the stress test requirement. That the, ba the uh, banks that are regulated under Dodd Frank, and and as you as you correctly point out, Silicon Valley Bank is no longer one of those or at least, you know, is uh, well under-regulated, uh, we're required every year or every two years, uh, uh, one or the other, to, to perform a stress test, to, to imagine the worst-case scenarios in the economy and make sure that their bank would survive that. They got exempted from that, and that's why they were invested in long bonds and, you know, on the assumption that interest rates were going to stay low forever, which was a stupid assumption. Well, it even goes beyond that. How, though, how because, is somebody who's look, got a checking government, account at this bank responsible for that? What we what you have is a government has to come up with these stress tests. They're not going to figure out some of these stress tests themselves. They don't know exactly what to test. But when you have depositors as a market making the decision whether a bank has stress test themselves correctly, then they're more likely to make the right decision. What but market? When you have a magic government fairy what, tale what, what is this magic market you're those. talking about? What do you mean the magic market? You said the, the market, you said when they have the market, you know, essentially regulating the bank, everything will be wonderful. What is this magical market you're talking about? That's each individual making their own decision. It's that invisible hand as individuals so, make decisions. So I have the market to, actually. Has. I have to. I have to come up with enough uh, equipment at home to be able to test all my food to make sure that the food that I'm getting isn't isn't you know filled with bad chemicals. I need to get a. Uh, what do they call those uh, contraptions that that uh, uh, can scan, <laughs> you know, uh, microscopes and all kinds of stuff? I, I have to uh, start uh, very carefully approaching every intersection because uh, you know the street lights and the stop signs are being taken down, and so you know we just always have to be looking around. I have to uh, I, I have to go into my bank and and examine their books every month and make sure that they're not making stupid investments. Is this is this the world that you're telling us would be the optimal world for America? Yes, I am, because that, that's even what I teach my kids. And I'll tell you what, it saved my life yesterday. I was going through an intersection and a car red, ran a red light. You know what I did? I don't trust the government. So I was actually looking for cars to run red lights. I was able to stop in time. The fact is, is we need people paying attention to what's going on. And the more government control you have, the more nanny state the more that people stop paying attention to what they're doing. If you, uh, if you, the higher you increase Social Security, the less people invest in retirement. There's different pieces where the government is involved. We pay less attention to what we're doing. We pay less attention to where our money's going. Well, and I just, I, I, you know, frankly, I don't the have the time, Charles. You don't need that. And I don't think the average person has the time to be investigating their doctor and their bank and their food suppliers. Well, they should, and they should. They, there's okay. th easy ways to do it, and now we have the internet to help us out. Right. Therefore, technology. Okay, Charles Sauer, the libertarian economist.